So when you first launch Infoworks, this is the front end you're going to get. And so it's going to show you previews of any of the previous models that you've been working with. And this is currently showing me uh, ones that are available on my system as well as the ones that are available through my local group uh, through a cloud-based service. So you can manage those right up here on top. You can generate new models, which will allow you to connect to and bring in all of your own data. You can search for any files you like. And as I mentioned before, Model Builder is now available, which is a really nice feature. Basically, with Model Builder, all you really do is click on it, let it lo uh, load up in the window. While that's loading up, let me talk about these side options over here. Oh, there it is. So uh, I'll come back to the side options. So you can navigate anywhere in the US and as well as the contiguous Canada and Alaska, anywhere you want to go. You can also type in a city or address, whatever you have available to you. And once you find the area you're looking for, you can just give it a name and hit Create Model. And then uh, it'll start processing on the cloud system. And it'll actually email you when, when the model's done. And you'll get a quick email saying, hey, your model's ready to go. You close this up, and you'll see the model sitting up here. And you'll notice there's different features in here. And one of them will be uh, download the model. This one, for example, download the model. And then you'll be able to go. And that will give you the jump off point for all of the data you're about to create. Besides that, we've got a lot of additional add-ons depending upon your login type and the subscription you have. You'll have access to various features. So you can see I've got uh, my, rodent my rodent design, uh, bridge modeling, drainage, as well as some of the uh, technology previews for things like uh, quarter optimization, uh, land areas, traffic simulation, things like that. So I'm going to jump right into my webinar model. And this is one I created just from the model builder, just as I described. And for those of you keeping score, uh, we're going to be working in Seattle, Washington today. So it's just an area I picked out. So we'll take a look around. And this is exactly what they gave me from the model builder. Kind of gave me my start point. So you can see I did get all the terrain I got the imagery, GIS roadways, as well in, as building data. So it gives me that start from where I want to continue my design from. Okay. And sometimes you might need to do a little bit of uh, adjusting, depending upon the data that you've received. Sometimes it's very detailed. Sometimes it's not as. But uh, it's very easy to make adjustments in here and as well as add your own information. So typically, this is where I would start. And then I would go and grab whatever data I've received from some of those GIS sites that I might have mentioned to you. And then I would add that information as well. So to do that, I would just go up and open up my data sources. And this shows me all of the data that was developed through the model, the model builder. And then I can go up and choose the different type of data that I would like to add on and I configure that and then it would add that into the model as well. So besides that, uh, everything works pretty seamlessly with a drag and drop functionality, which is nice. So if for some reason you found that uh, a road came in with the wrong type, and maybe it was the wrong configuration, you can just open up the style palette and then go and find roads, which is Uh, why am I not seeing roads? All right. So for whatever road type you're going for, you can simply drag and drop any type of style onto any other style to get that look you're going for. So it's also really nice to be able to analyze different design concepts, different themes, different ideas and understand what the impacts are going to be by utilizing those. Okay. 
So this is kind of what you would consider your master model. And uh, from here, you can see everything's been created as, as master. You can then create what we call proposals. And so the proposals will allow you to come in and add your own proposed design content. You can create as many as you like in case you want to come up with a few different design themes. Um, pretty simple and easy to do that. So I'm going to grab another proposal because you typically don't want to go out work on your master. That's kind of the existing conditions. So I'll grab a design one. And for the design one, it's basically the same thing. I just added a quick little uh, coverage area, just drew a little bit of grass and started off with a simple roadway. So from here, it's pretty simple and easy to go in and choose to start adding your own features. Uh, you can use the standard roads that come with the product as well as the uh, design roads that come with the, the road add-on module. So from here, if I wanted to create a design road, for example, I would just pick the type of road I want to create. And based upon the type of road you choose, it's going to look at certain standard files and apply speed limits and things like that. So I'll just do a local road and just scribble something on here. I'll just connect to that road there, maybe over there, and then uh, double click to connect right there. So you can see, pretty simple and easy, that roadway came right in. And again, I could grab the different style types and start dragging and dropping on those. So I laid that out horizontally. And uh, what I can also do is by looking at the geometry, I can also alter this vertically. So I can just say I want to uh, add a PI, PVI, and so that one gets inserted there, right where I select it. And I can pick my vertical curve size. Maybe I want a 150-foot uh, vertical. Then I can take that design, raise and lower, and make all the changes I want. And if I really want to start understanding what's going on with this design, <clears throat> I could uh, bring up the profile. And it's going to show me the profile information. And I can adjust it here as well. So any changes I make are going to occur on my model. It's going to give me live data, station, elevation, as well as rate of grades. And I can choose to continue to uh, modify this kind of as I see fit. So let's go back and uh, take a look at this intersection. So this intersection you saw was pretty automated. It came right in on its own. And it created the pavement markings and stopped the pavements and such. And you can see by when I hover on it, it does show that it's its own entity. And so when I select that, I do get the uh, heads up display which is going to show me that it's currently being designed for standard passenger vehicles. Now, if I want to further enhance this, uh, based upon uh, standard templates, I can choose different vehicle types. And you can see how it will regenerate to accommodate the turning radius of the various vehicles that uh, I might decide uh, need to access this area. So that's a nice little feature they've added. So now you can really control those a lot better. And you can see how the pavement markings, the medians, and everything all update on the fly uh, as those changes occur. So that's kind of nice. So we could continue to uh, draw on this by adding additional roads and features and things. Maybe I wanted an additional road, maybe something that uh, 
connected down here, over to here, and then ties in. A double click will get you out of the tool. As you can see, anytime you connect to a road, it automatically creates intersections. Oh, looks like I missed this one. Well, it's a great opportunity to demonstrate how easy these things are to adjust. So I can just grab it, click, snap it on there, and notice how it will automatically generate that uh, intersection for me. I can continue to alter this horizontally. And again, I can do it vertically as well. So go in and start adding that information in there.